You may be wondering what are the bounds of the widths of the viewport for each of these call classes. For instance, how narrow does a viewport have to be for the call dash large set of classes to revert to their default width of 100% of the viewport? And to answer this question, I'm going to go straight to the documentation. So we're here at the site getbootstrap.com and I'm going to click on the CSS tab. And in this tab, we'll notice that the second item in the menu down here is called grid system. So I'm going to click that and scroll down a little bit till I see media queries. And we can recall what media queries are from a couple sections ago when we wrote them ourselves. But we'll see that there are four commented sections here. One that says extra small devices, phones less than 768 pixels, and then three media queries that target 768 pixels, 992 pixels, and 1200 pixels. So we can deduce then that extra small devices, that XS set of classes, targets 768 pixel screens. The SM set of call classes targets screens that are between 768 pixels and 992 pixels wide. The call dash MD classes target screens that are between 992 pixels wide and 1200 pixels wide. And the dash LG classes target screens that are at least 1200 pixels wide. So just like what we did when we wrote these media queries by hand, if, for instance, we use the dash LG class, then if our screen is at least 1200 pixels wide, those classes are going to be applied to our div elements. But if the screen is less than 1200 pixels wide because it's a min width media query, it's going to default to taking up the entire row. And same thing with medium devices and small devices. So we want to be conscientious of which set of call classes to use based on the types of screens that we're targeting. Now, we can apply multiple column classes that target different size devices in the same div element, and that's what we're going to explore in this section. The general rule of thumb is that our column classes should add up to 12. So here I have an example of three div elements where the first is call medium 6, the second is call medium 3, and the third is call medium 3. 6 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 12. And let's see how each of these columns is displayed on our web page. Just as we'd expect, we have one div that spans six columns and two other divs that span three columns. But what happens when we shrink the size of our viewport? Ah, once our viewport becomes less than 992 pixels wide, each of these divs reverts to its default width of 100% of the viewport. Now, this may be okay in many cases, but what if we want our divs to have a different behavior on smaller viewport sizes while still having the same behavior of six, three, and three on a medium viewport. Let's go back into our code to see how we might accomplish this. On viewports that are at least 992 pixels wide, like desktops and laptops, my first div element is going to span six columns, and my second two div elements are going to span three columns. But on smaller viewports, they each default to being their own individual row, and I don't want that. On smaller viewports, like tablets and phones, say, I want the first div element to span an entire row, but I want the second two div elements to each span six columns on the same row. How might I accomplish this? Well, I can add a class to each of these div elements. Now, because I want to target both phones and tablets, I'm going to target the smaller of the two because I know that my media queries are min width queries. So by targeting phones, I'm also in effect going to be targeting tablets. But then once my viewport's at least 992 pixels wide, my call medium classes will take over. Let's go ahead and add call extra small classes to each of these second two div elements. And let's see how they behave now in the browser. When our viewport's medium or larger, our first div element still spans six columns, and our second two div elements still span three columns, just as we'd expect. But when we shrink down the size of our viewport, now our first div element spans the entire row, and our second two div elements each span six columns. However, on second thought, I think it would be nice if instead of spanning full six columns, they each span four columns, and maybe had a little bit of space in between. Let's see how we might accomplish this. To add spacing in between each of these div elements, I'm going to use another bootstrap column class called the offset classes. And here's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to add the call medium offset of zero class, as well as the call extra small four class and the call extra small offset two class. Now, here's exactly what these do. The call medium offset zero class says that when my viewport is at least medium size, I'm not going to have any offset between this div element and my previous div element. 
But we do want offset when we have an extra small class and we want our columns to span or we want our divs to span four columns. It may not seem necessary to include this call medium offset zero, but it is because if we don't, then this call extra small offset two will be applied even when the viewport is medium. So we have to add all three of these classes in order to get the behavior that we want. To conclude though, we're gonna see how each of these looks in the browser. It still looks good in a medium viewport. Now let's shrink the size of the viewport to see how it looks on a smaller one. And just as we hoped for, there's now an offset of two columns in between each div element.